This video is sponsored by Carter, manufacturers of water pumps and fuel pumps since 1909. Visit carterengineer.com to learn more. One of the most difficult things to understand about fuel injection is fuel pressure. Because technically, on a lot of engines, at the rail, it should never change. So what changes? Well, it's actually how the injector opens and how long it stays open. But how long that injector stays open determines how much fuel is needed by the rail. And this is the responsibility of the fuel pump and pressure regulator. In the 1980s and 1990s, the regulator for the fuel pressure was typically underneath the hood of the vehicle. This meant that there was a feed line and a return line that returned the excess fuel to the trunk. In other words, this poor fuel pump was having to work at full gate the whole time. With modern systems, they vary the speed that the turbine inside the fuel pump is turning. And then it also has a pressure regulator inside the tank that may be electronically controlled. This means that there's one line going to that fuel rail. Once you pull out your scan tool and you start looking at that data PID for fuel pressure and you go for a test drive, you may see a five to 10 variation in fuel pressure, but it shouldn't be that much. In other words, it should stay about level compared to the load put on the engine. If it drops down or goes too high, it's a sign that there's an issue with the fuel pump that needs to be investigated further. So the next time you're having to diagnose a fuel system problem, either in the classroom or in the real world, just keep in mind the fuel pressure at the rail should remain relatively constant or within inside of a range specified by the manufacturer. What is changing? Well, it's the amount of demand on the fuel pump and also the pulse width for the opening of the fuel injector. Just keep these two things in mind when you're diagnosing a fuel system problem and you'll come up with the correct diagnosis. I'm Andrew Markell. Thank you very much.